The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. For months, dozens of medical students at the University of Miami posted innocent photos of themselves on their social media accounts. Little did they know there was someone using them for a much darker purpose. Take a look. Social media sites have become a haven for millennials to document their every move, from selfies to fun photographs with friends and that perfect pic with a loved one. Posting up our favorite moments has become an everyday aspect of our life. But what if those moments were used in the most sinister ways imaginable? That's exactly what happened at the University of Miami, where a young medical student is believed to have posted dozens of female students' photos on creepy sex websites without their knowledge. Worst of all, many women are left wondering if this is truly illegal because the photos were first published by them. With so much of our precious private moments online for the world to see, is it time we all rethink how safe our captured memories really are? So just to clarify to everyone, the students posted photos on social media. Of course, no idea these photos were then being copied, uploaded to sex websites. This were, these sites were sites for people with foot fetishes, for instance. Sites for men who masturbate while viewing images of everyday women. And the posts often identified the students with lewd captions. Some of the photos even featured the faces of the women superimposed on pornographic images. One woman's petition said photos were found on at least eight websites featuring hundreds of photos. And the alleged perpetrator was a fellow male medical student. Well, and Margaret, and, and these students had complained about his past behavior reportedly, harassment, stalking. So yes. there were, it seems like, some red flags. Totally, totally creepy uh, yes. at the outset. Uh, but one of the issues comes up when we post something online, there is an implied consent. So the issue is, how far does that consent go? So I, I think in this case, we have to say that the implied consent did not include sharing it to a fetish site. But isn't this like untested waters? I mean, there's so many new issues that come up with social media and well, there's so many porn it really sites is. and it, it fetish really is. sites, whatever you want, it's all there. The law is oh. trying to catch up. So it, it's really developing as we speak. In 38 states and DC, uh, conduct is illegal, cyber exploitation, which includes revenge porn. Uh, but the problem is, because it's developing, it doesn't really capture every specific set of facts. And I know the state attorney's office is reviewing this, but outside of that, these are incredibly difficult, I would imagine, to prosecute. I think we all agree what he did was wrong, but, but if he is even convicted, what is he convicted of and what is the punishment? So I, I think one of the challenges on both the criminal and civil side is that you have to prove intent. You know, so this guy was uh, a weirdo, a wacko, mm -hmm. a creep. All of but, that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but did, we concur. Did he intend? So I think yeah. when the law on the books falls short, we yeah. have to pivot and we have to go to common law so we could definitely go after this person for civil harassment and emotional distress because we don't have to prove intent there yep. just that he acted recklessly and harm was the and result you can always go to the emotional distress